Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC to do everything DIY. Today we are doing the preventive maintenance and combustion analysis for three large hydraulic boilers. We have this one open right now. Let's go ahead and get started. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. Today we're performing the preventive maintenance and combustion analysis for three boilers. The combustion analysis is going to be in a separate video for this one specifically i'm going to show you guys how to check gas pressure and also adjust gas pressure this is a lars hydronic boiler and this tag you'll see this is a lars mighty therm water heater this one dates back to june 19th 2012 as far as the date of manufacture and we need to look at what is the gas supply minimums and maximums also what is the manifold gas pressure so if we look on the bottom here i'll show you guys in a photo but it says maximum permissible gas supply pressure is 10 then it shows inches wc that's inches in water column and it says the minimum permissible gas supply pressure for input adjustment is six inches water column the yellow line is our gas supply natural gas comes in little gas valve union drip leg comes in so this is gonna be our inlet and then outlet is gonna be here feeding our burner section we have everything off at the moment so our manifold pressure it says it should be four inches of water column So we should be between six and 10 for our supply. No higher than 10, no less than six. And our manifold pressure on this side should be at four. A lot of units are rated at 3.5, but this is why it's very important to look at your tag. Today, I'm gonna to be using the field piece SDMN5 dual port manometer. Here's my manometer by field piece. I have my two hoses currently connected, one on P1 and then one on P2. Here's P1, this is P2. So we can read two pressures, pressure one and pressure two. On the other side, I have these special cables here with this fitting where I can connect it to my gas valve. Let's try to get a photo there or some light set up there you can see over there it says in and obviously this is our inlet pipe right here you can see the gas line supply that's going to be your inlet side of your gas valve and then the outlet side is right here this other one screw here and then the other screw right here and the outlet's always going to be feeding your manifold for your burner section because I need to connect those little connections on the gas valve itself, I'm gonna turn the gas supply off. Oh man, this thing doesn't wanna go. That is gonna require some force. There we go. And we should be fully closed there. Here's gonna be our outlet. I'm just gonna use that as P2. Need to get an Allen key and loosen that up. Loosen that up. Kind of a tight spot for the outlet. And I'm gonna connect P2 in, in that place. So I'm simply just gonna spin that on there. Let's make sure those threads are good. Okay, adjustable. Got a little four inch mini adjustable. And we're gonna tighten that down. Oh, got a really in, in a bad spot here. It's very tight. Might take off the wires when I need to do this, but pretty much we're gonna tighten this down. You don't want need it to be super, super tight, but you also don't want it to leak. This is a very bad spot here. This is just about no pressure in there. So you should be okay. If you really want to be safe, maybe you could put some special Teflon tape on here or some paste, but it's a bit unneeded. 
Now we're gonna do the same for the inlet. We're gonna get a little smell of gas now. So you're gonna wanna do this a little quick. Cause there's gas in the line. Hopefully this gas valve is holding. Either way, you're gonna wanna do this real quick. See, they got these controls and everything in here. They really, this is like all in a bad spot. I'll take that out. Spin that to the left. So now we can get this into the right. And it goes in smooth. That's open. Now we're simply going to spin this on. Okay. And use a little adjustable to tighten it down. Doesn't need to be too, too tight. All right. And now we're set up. One key note to take note out of is when you first start it is actually, you're going to want to zero out your meter and then you're gonna to wanna to test it. If you look closely, I have P1 here on our inlet and I have P2 on our outlet. I'll open up the gas now. I do have a gas leak detector as well. All right, I'm gonna make sure that's not leaking. So let's see, on P1, we have 7.5 two three inches of water column which is pretty good on p2 0 0.08 0 0.07 so it's just about not going through good turn on this boiler everything is good here pump should be constantly on let's turn that up I'm trying to spark I heard something click. All right. Pressure and interest water columns going up. We're reading P2. All right, let's keep an eye on P2. 3.9294, we're getting close to that four that we want. four inches of water column while it's running the inlet we have six right which would be between six and ten while it's off we got 7.3 while it's on we got six and our outlet is 3.97 four four inches of water column we're right about where it needs to be this is pretty this is adjusted pretty well okay guys so real quick i'm going to show you how to adjust your gas valve if you look back here we have this flathead uh, screw cap here this is where you make your adjustment clockwise to increase and counterclockwise to decrease and this will adjust the full pressure okay that's gonna be on your inlet side in out here uh, out you can see here's our little aluminum tube I believe it's aluminum not stainless steel and that's your pilot tubing we actually have another adjustment here that you guys sh should be aware of. let's make sure this stays right here we have a phillips screw and that's going to be to adjust the gas flow through your pilot and i'm going to show you guys a diagram so you guys can see for this exact model Okay, so of course our gas is now closed again, right? We, had, we tested it when we were in the unit. You want everything according to spec, just to your unit specifically. We're gonna take this out. Small little adjustable or open end wrench, whatever you use, okay? And once that is out, you're gonna put the caps back in. Just remember it doesn't need to be too tight don't go crazy if you want you can put some paste on there or a little tape if you want but there's barely any pressure there once you put this back okay i'm gonna close each end 
keep and turn the boiler on make sure it turns back on because you're probably gonna have some air inside there but after it tries a few times it should clear that out so you're just gonna snug that back on each one and you're gonna want to do a leak test sometimes most people just use maybe micro gas leak detector and you'll be okay but i also have an electronic leak detector this is an infocon gas mate combustible gas leak detector and guys you can't go wrong investing in tools and good tools yep and when it comes to natural gas you don't want to play around you don't want any leaks in there so let's just get this all back together and check for leaks our manometer is done with we could turn on our gas leak detector you're gonna hear that noise and once it starts beeping we're gonna be ready to go Maybe it's going through some sort of purge as well. We'll see, let's let this thing settle out. All right, we have no lights on here. The highest light and the most noise will be a big leak. Right now here, just a little beep with no lights. Everything's good. I'm gonna set it over there while I open the gas. Open the gas, and we're gonna monitor. I like to use my electronic here, and then we can spray it with bubbles. So I like to hear it first, right? And then we'll be okay. I guess while we're here, we'll check anything else. And the outlet, it's only going to be gas there once the unit is on. I like to sometimes check the unions and the valves. As you can see, things are like rusty here. But you really want to just check what you took off. And it looks like we're good to go. And I'm also going to spray these, start the unit make sure there's no leaks but we're gonna end this video here we also need a vacuum inside here i see a bunch of contaminants that's not good definitely time for a tune-up adjustment of any kind and yeah we're gonna wrap this one up here that's how we check and adjust our gas pressure on a boiler or a furnace it's gonna be the same thing and the same adjustments will pretty much be due with any kind of gas valve for any burners or furnace it's typically this i don't know i see honeywells almost on any piece of equipment but anyways that's how you do it and i hope you guys learned something new if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time